I recently read a short piece by Seth Godin, the famous marketing guy, about the difference between long work and hard work. And I'm just going to go ahead and read this to you because it really is short and I won't do a good job summarizing it, um, or at least I won't do as good a job as he does just saying it. So he says, long work is what the lawyer who bills 14 hours a day filling in forms does. Hard work is what the insightful litigator does when she synthesizes four disparate ideas and comes up with an argument that wins the case in less than five minutes. Long work has a storied history. Farmers, hunters, factory workers, always there was long work required to succeed. For generations, there was a huge benefit that came to those with the stamina and the fortitude to do long work. Hard work is frightening. We shy away from hard work because inherent in hard work is risk. Hard work is hard because you might fail. You can't fail at long work, you merely show up. It's worth noting that long work often sets the stage for hard work. If you show up enough and practice enough and learn enough, it's more likely you will find yourself in a position to do hard work. It seems though, that no matter how much long work you do, you won't produce the benefits of hard work unless you are willing to leap. Welcome to This Can't Be That Hard. My name is Anami Tonkin, and I help photographers run profitable, sustainable businesses that they love. Each week on the podcast, I cover simple, actionable strategies and systems that photographers at every level of experience can use to earn more money in a more sustainable way. Running a photography business doesn't have to be that hard. You can do it, and I can show you how. Okay, so... I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I <laughs> loved everything about that short passage. It was one of those things that I think I didn't love it because it made me feel necessarily great about myself. I mean, I I do feel like I do some hard work in my life and in my job and, you know, that I've been willing to take some leaps. But I also kind of felt seen in that vulnerable way because there are plenty of ways in which I'm still pretty married to long work. I <laughs> was just recently talking to my therapist about this. Like this is one of those deep rooted mindset things that, you know, I think that a lot of people my age probably grew up with. I mean, I know that my parents were part of a generation where it was like the harder you work, not only the better the outcome, but also in some ways, like the better human you are. And I think that there has been a backlash to that that I see in, you know, some people in the younger generation where they put very clear boundaries around like today is not a good day for me to work, so I'm not going to work. And they're, you know, demanding that workplaces stretch to accommodate that. And, you know, I see it as kind of a pendulum, like <laughs> the extremes are are probably they each have their issues. And I think that the uh, the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. I am probably further. I swing further in the direction of uh, long work because of my upbringing. But I have grown to see many of the benefits of hard work. And I'm working toward, I'm doing the hard work toward getting to a place where that, if not e eclipses or erases, at least cuts significantly into the unnecessary long work that I tend to lean on. But I wanted to read that to start because it sparked this series of thoughts and sort of thought process for me that I wanted to share. You know, we've got long work and hard work to do in our business as photographers. But then I believe that we also have this concept of broad work and deep work. And I think that those share similar qualities to the long work and hard work passage that I just read to you. So I'm using these terms in this case to mean like for broad work, it's sort of the, I don't have a niche mentality. I am have camera, will make photographs. <laughs> so, you know, I'll photograph your house for Airbnb or your new business headshot or your family's holiday card or your daughter's bat mitzvah, whatever you need 
I am here. I am looking for work. I am willing to put in, you know, the time and effort for a day's wage. If you are in that situation right now, if you are sort of catching work whenever and wherever you can, and specifically in, if you're in a stage of your business where you advertise as such. So there are probably plenty of people whose websites and whose social media would paint the picture that they have a very specific niche. But if someone calls them and says, you know, hey, I know you normally do family photos, but I need a headshot, they're willing to to do that. And then there are those people whose websites are basically like, great, I have portfolio work from all eight of these different niches, and I'm going to put a different subcategory in on my website for each of them so that if somebody shows up here wanting, you know, real estate photos, they're going to they're going to find something. So if you're certainly if you're in that category, but even if you're in the sort of like secret uh, broad photographer category, I want you to think about the fact, and this is a fact, and I know it because I have dealt with this many, many times in my own business, the fact that if you are honest, when you take work in a whole bunch of different fields, you end up spending so much time and energy every time you get hired trying to put together a contract for that particular person, trying to get prep guide materials together for that particular job. Every time that you take a client in a significantly different niche, you kind of have to reinvent the wheel, right? You are creating pricing. You're trying to come up with like, well, what lens is going to be best to photograph this kid whizzing by on a bicycle or whatever the case may be. You do a ton of work for each of those, much more effort than you would expend or than you do expend when it comes to actually just shooting and editing the photos. And that can be okay There's certainly nothing morally wrong with it, Um, but at some point, there is kind of a tipping point where you have to see that you have overloaded yourself with this extraneous work, and it's time to start to do the scary thing (laughs) and move into deep work. So as opposed to broad work, deep work is choosing a specific niche, and focusing all of your time and energy there. And remember, a niche, I feel like niche is always associated with service, and certainly it can be service specific. So you can be a newborn photographer, or you can be an elopement photographer, or you can be a brand photographer. But a niche can also be client specific. So you can serve you can focus your messaging and your energy on serving the LGBTQ community or musicians or, uh, and this is the one that (laughs) I always joke that I accidentally became sort of a niche photographer for anesthesiologists. I have done more work for the anesthesiology community in North Carolina or in Chapel Hill anyway, than I imagine any other photographer has done And that's because when I was working as a nurse, I had a few friends uh, who were anesthesia residents at the time who then like went on to, they had, they got married, they had kids, they had me photograph their weddings and their kids. And then they had friends and, you know, other anesthesiologists who were coming up under them. And my name just got really networked in that community. And it has continued to serve me now for 14 years. So it wasn't intentional. (laughs) And if you are thinking about, you know, uh, service specific niche versus client specific niche, if you have a group of people uh, in an industry or in, you know, who are connected by some sort of cause or anything like that, that can be something that you lean into. Even, especially, I guess I was going to say even if, but especially if you like doing a variety of kinds of photographic work. You know, the the benefit to niching down in terms of your uh, service is that 
you get known for a particular thing, your website speaks really clearly to that particular thing. But I do know photographers who are like, I just don't want to do the same thing all the time. So if that's you and you still see the benefits of niching down, maybe consider going more in a client-specific niche. And then there's the ability to combine those two things. So you can do, you know, headshots for real estate agents. That can be your niche. Um, And then you just own it. And that's, you go all around and you're going to real estate conventions and you're offering headshots and you're, you know, whatever. Um, You can be a home birth specific birth photographer, perhaps. Um, And that way, you know, then you're really like going all in on this very small niche. But as long as it's large enough, as long as there's a large enough population of people who fit that niche and are able to uh, pay your prices in your area, that can be your whole business. You know, if I, (laughs) this is not my niche, but I joke too, because I have been doing photographs for my brother, who's a furniture maker for years, and I have gotten better, not, I'm still not really good, but I've gotten better at uh, taking photos of furniture. And I've ended up, you know, building out my gear kit and everything else for that specific thing. So if I wanted to specialize in furniture photos, um, I could. In fact, I get pings from people who, you know, are like follow my brother on Instagram and they ask me to do photos for them. And I'm like, absolutely not. (laughs) Sorry, I got off on a tangent there. I'm going to bring it back. The deeper the work that you do, the smaller the niche is that you're serving, there are some pretty significant benefits. Number one, And this kind of, you know, is what I was talking about with the furniture thing. You will become more skilled in that specialty than you would if you just did it periodically. And you will know to like build out your equipment in that direction. So if you're doing all different kinds of things, you're probably not going to buy a lens that's specific to one sub niche. But if you do focus on that one sub niche and then, you know, somebody wants a very specific kind of photo, you may be the only person in your entire area who's able to accommodate that desire. Certainly, then you want to talk about that, which leads me to the second point, right? Like the more specific your niche, the deeper the work, the stronger your messaging is going to get. Because if you're only writing blog posts that talk about the, you know, special challenges of the busy physician's family life and how hard it is to like get your family together when you're dealing, you know, juggling call schedules and that sort of thing. That is going to be better. It's also going to just be better from an interpersonal perspective because you develop a knowledge base around a certain thing. You know the kinds of questions to ask. So when you go and you show up and you're working with that person, you're able to make conversation that makes them feel right at home. Like you know them, like you're their friend. Even though you may not be an anesthesiologist, you kind of know the lingo, you know their friends, you know, you're you're just an easy yes for them. Which is again the the other benefit to uh to doing that like deep work in a small niche is that you are very easily able to start to get networked and um and referred so i very frequently when i get a new inquiry from someone they'll say oh you know i i was looking around on google and then i came across your website and i saw four of my friends in your portfolio And I'll say, are you an anesthesiologist by any chance? And they laugh and they're like, oh, my gosh, how did you know? (laughs) And then I joke around about how I photograph all these anesthesiologists. And I'll even tell the little story about how I kind of that happened by accident, but it really did happen. And immediately they feel like, oh, this is the photographer that photographs everybody that I, you know, that I know. And um, and it just gives me that instant credibility. But. To wrap it up, just like Seth Godin said about long work setting the stage for hard work, I would say that broad work really does set the stage for deep work. Most of us kind of have to try a lot of things before we find that perfect fit, that thing that we feel like, yep, this is where I'm going to like find my niche. 
And also, like Seth said, you have to recognize when it's your time to leap and you have to have the courage to actually do it. And it does require courage because there is a sense of security in broad work that is very compelling. Um, I think that our brains, just like we sort of naturally believe that like if you work long hours, you will make more or have more success or get there eventually or whatever, there is something in our brains that believes that if we just play it safe and we serve everyone and everyone who reaches out to us gets you know, a totally custom experience from us and a yes from us, that's the safe way to go. But deep down, we know <laughs> that maybe leaping toward that deeper work is going to be the thing that makes our business viable in the long run. And that's, that's where it is, right? You have to have the courage to make the leap because otherwise, eventually, it is going to start feeling like your business is caught in quicksand. All right, you guys, have a great week. Well, that's it for this week's episode of This Can't Be That Hard. I'll be back same time, same place next week. In the meantime, you can find more information about this episode, along with all the relevant links, notes, and downloads at thiscan'tbethathard.com slash learn. If you like the podcast, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Even better, share the love by leaving a review in iTunes. And as always, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic week.